Ah! Ah! Is that one of the most shocking endings in any movie ever? Generic intro in the deck goes me here back with some more kill count today We're doing the miss which came out in 2007. I did not know it came out in 2007 I thought this movie was way older. I've never actually seen this movie I've seen nostalgia critics review of the miss and I think everybody knows the uh, The ending of it where the miss clears and like tanks roll through and all that the last one I did was your next which is a movie I really want to watch on my own because that kill count was really really good A lot of people said that I should you took a reaction to that video I'll leave it right up there also link down below description and it'll be in a place on my channel with all my other kill counts going in chronological order so you can start all over from the beginning almost none of these movies i have seen i've seen get out and what ms is blue but ms is blue is a youtube eventually react to ms is blue it's on my channel it's one of my longest videos i've ever done it's really really good but i had no idea the miss was from 2007 i thought it was way older unless this is a different the miss than i'm thinking of i'm not sure but i look forward to reading your comments i should be live today at 5 p.m so I think I'm gonna do Undertale, the G run. I fought Sans for four hours straight last week. I think I know how to do it this time. So maybe that can actually happen, but let's go ahead and jump into the mist. Also shout out to the patrons, cause they give it his day early. All right. I didn't know the mist came out in 2007. Is this the, the movie I'm the thinking count, of? Where we tally up the victims in all our favorite horror movies. I'm James like, A. Janice, and today wait, we're looking at The Mist, a 2007 Frank Darabont film based on a Stephen King novella that I actually managed to read in preparation for this video. The wait, Mist is Frank what? Darabont's third Stephen King adaptation after writing and directing both Shawshank Redemption wait, in 94 and The Green Mile in 99. Is this a different? And after The Mist, Darabont would go on to create uh, The so I've never Dead, seen which is why you'll find no less mile. than four actors here who eventually wound up on that show. The Mist tells the story of survivors trapped in a supermarket after a heavy fog okay so no this is that movie i've seen the statue hopefully i don't have to blur anything hiding things right. that go bump in the mist well it may sound like a simple monster movie the mist spends more time examining how human beings react in moments way of older with a lot of philosophical and religious discussion to go around as the situation grows ever more dire oh that's last note, i initially watched this movie in the black and white version because that's how darabont wanted it to be made and shown but i'll be using the color print for this video because okay. that's the way it was released and because if the night of the living dead kill counts views are any indication Y'all don't give a damn about black and white movies. All right, let's get <laughs> that video got unlisted because I guess it wasn't doing good. The movie begins with a storm in the small town of Bridgeton, Maine. Local artist, of David course, Drayton it's in Maine because Stephen King. Billy and his wife Stephanie downstairs. To I don't know if I've ever actually seen a Stephen King this movie. This was a doozy, as evidenced by the giant tree popping in through the living room window that night. While surveying the damage the next morning, they find another tree has fallen and smushed. I mean, the you can't park there. As they look across the lake, they notice some smoke on the water, but luckily no fire in the sky. David walks over to his neighbor that, Norton. What is that reference? Attorney played by Andre Brower to exchange insurance info since it was his tree that broke his boathouse. Norton's had a bad morning too since the storm also claimed his prized car. David offers that his was his prized car? Though they have a fraught relationship. Norton having sued David in the past over property boundaries. Man, boathouses, prized cars, property boundary disputes? On a lake? Kind of missed as a guy have to walk through to have those problems. I know, Norton right? Norton arrived with David and Billy to head into town for supplies. On the way, they see a bunch of trucks heading to a nearby military base. The Arrowhead Project? Any idea what they do up there? Missile defense research? You know, I'm sure you've heard the stories. Between that and all the radio stations and phone being down, something's clearly gone that's wrong. Inside the store, we need some of the ensemble cast. The most important are wow, that's a lot of cashiers at a grocery store. Love by the end of this movie, and Mrs. Carmody, played by Marsha Gay Harden, who I promise you will hate with every fiber of your being. Others include Irene, an elderly school teacher, and her friend Hattie, a trio of military dudes from Arrowhead, including Private Starkiller Jessup, who has the eyes for store employee Sally, and Amanda Dumfrey, Irene's fellow school teacher who's new in town. A military uh, okay. police officer shows up at the store to tell the soldiers uh, that their leave has been canceled, and after a bunch of emergency. Really? Say military police, not just MPs. Running to the store is Dan, Bridgeton's very own Paul Revere. Something in the mist! Something in the mist! He tells them to shut the doors and stay inside, but one dude decides I... to run for his car instead. As the mist moves uh... over the shopping complex, it engulfs everything in its path. Although we see a bunch of people down there, I'm only going to count the dude who ran out on the kill count because he uh, I wonder if that would change in the screen recount. Screen. So congrats, I actually don't know how many people died the video. or got the killed. The just store, because I only seen this out of the video. number of light fixtures in the process, and people immediately start theorizing about what's going on. Old Grizzly Bear Amber claims it's some kind of chemical plant explosion while mrs carmody goes for a much simpler tried and true classic it's the end of days one woman uh, of course by melissa mcbride says she has to get back to her kids she left at home she implores oh, them all for some comfort won't somebody here see a lady home 
but everyone diverts their eyes, so she leaves the store without them, heading off into the mist alone mm, to go find now her, they her save her kids. Some time later, uh, David heads into have, the back room uh, yeah. to get a blanket for Billy and finds the generator smoking. He's all like, somebody should stop this. So he turns it off, but Do I'm way grocery back stores have really generators? Freaking, and sees the I guess they would, because he asks Ollie and these for two cats, Myron and Jim, if they heard it, but they just think he's hearing things in the dark. They're joined by another store employee, Norm, who I didn't mention earlier because I figured everybody knows his name. They all head to the back room his name where Myron is Norm. says something's blocking the generator Raider's exhaust port on the outside, so Norm volunteers to go out there and unblock it. David tries to Why? stop him, but Jim calls him a big old sissy. They open the gate a bit, and while they're laughing at David's sense of and caution, yoink. Kind of slithers in and grabs Norm's leg. I definitely thought it would be ground. better David if you tries to didn't save him see the monster. The mechanics freeze in fear, and the tentacles rip skin from Norm's leg and neck. Ollie's a G, though, and grabs a fire axe, but before he can bring it down on the tentacle, Norm is pulled away. The tentacles keep on coming, like pop-ups on a hentai site, and Norm is dragged <laughs> out to his death off oh, there's for the a thumbnail. second kill of the movie. When David and Ollie get the gate closing again, the tentacles start to retreat. But David breaks him For off a piece of that squid like arm and closes out a wonderful action horse. Now they're mad. After David rightfully punches Jim in the face for getting Norm killed, they come out of the That's back fair. room. Yeah, no, David that, changes his are... shirt while talking to Amanda. Girl, she don't mind. The fellows are all shook up mm -hmm, when they realize the entire front of the store is plate glass. So they start doing what any good American does and start boiling it up. Drinking beer. They try to... to recruit Norton to help them warn everyone since he's a big shot, respectable attorney, but he doesn't believe them one bit, thinking they're playing a trick on him since he's an out of towner and has payback uh, for the time he sued David. Their little spat attracts uh, the attention. Uh, of everyone else in the store, including owner Bud, who threatens to write down everyone's and name for drinking the store's beer. Really? In the meantime, shut the fuck up and listen. David tells everyone how something out of the mist <laughs> yeah. took Norm away. There's obviously skepticism. Dude, how in the world in that situation is that what you're worried shows about? Them the tentacle, which reacts violently after a poke and then turns black and starts smoking before dissolving away into nothing. How convenient it waited that long. long. It appears we may have a problem of some magnitude here. While people stack bags of fertilizer and dog food against the windows as defense, Mrs. Carmody prays and asks Scott if he can help her save some of the people in the fertilizer? store. It's a great monologue from Marsha Gay Harden, whose performance in this movie earned her a Saturn Award. So that's pretty cool. What is Amanda a Saturn Award? On the altar, needing to use the bathroom, but also offering her friendship. Today I need a friend like you. I'll just have myself a little squat and shit one out. So that's a no. Different camps of ideology begin to form in the store. Norton leads the skeptics, saying there's no proof to David's tale. While Carmody says this what? is all straight uh, out of revelations. And the Why did they just show them all the things? From the glory of God. She goes that on, on you? Fire and Brimstone sermon about sinners in the midst of an angry God and starts touching a kid's face. Hey, uh, Mom, why don't you stop that crazy lady from touching your kid's face there? When Carmody up. calls for expiation in the form of blood sacrifice, Amanda's had enough. Another down payment. <laughs> A few more pennies in the jar. Comedy concludes with a promise that more people will be taken in the night. Billy oversees the military men having a hushed discussion before David tries to comfort him by saying Stephanie will be just fine at home. Uh -huh. Thinking of contingencies, Dan asks if anyone has a gun, but the only one packing is Amanda, and she's not an experienced shooter. Does anyone in this place know how to shoot well? Why do you I have it? Hell yeah, you do, Ollie, because you want unassuming. That was action. concealed. Some target sharing. State champion in '94. Norton's had enough. Oh, well, that's actually pretty impressive. If Maine had more than ten people, he'll go with them just to grab a shotgun from Ambrose's truck outside. Maybe he didn't he grab a man actually. Tie a rope Maybe. around his waist to let everyone also, know how far they made it in case anything happens to them. Carmody taunts them. Maine has a lot of people. Maine's beautiful. I want to go. This is the last time we see Norton and his crew, so I'm going to add him and his six nameless red shirts to the count right now, meaning Jake Peralta can look forward to a promotion. Nine nine. I think it's safe to say they're dead, since something obviously goes awry when the rope the, the first goes slack and then it's pulled out with such speed that it burns David's hand. The rope is pulled skyward, then falls slack again, and when David reels it in, it looks like he caught a big one, or half a big one anyway, mm -hmm. as he drags the biker's lower body towards the store, confirming his death and pushing our the biker, double dude. digits. Knife settles in, and we get a non-book scene between Jessup and Sally in the back of the store, so that we can care more when one of them inevitably dies. Yeah, build up <laughs> those course. pathos points. Out front, we get the first good look at a creature from the mist when a bunch of big nasty bugs start crawling all around on the window Are they outside. like aliens or something? serves as more evidence in Mrs. Carmody's mind. Locusts upon the earth. The bugs may look real gross, but they don't seem like much of a threat. Unlike these pterodactyl looking motherfuckers, those are crashing into the window as they're grabbing their midnight snacks. Nothing gets you flying like uh, yep. a fourth meal. One of them also, they definitely don't have enough things on the a bunch of bugs in as well. Amanda's the, able the to defend herself with a nice squishy bug stomp, but Sally gets stung on the neck and starts to convulse on the ground. As That's Ollie not good. chases down the Terry in the store with his gun, another flies in and lands on the stew Tom, pinning him to the ground and ripping out his throat, which oh, Tom from behind. Too bad for Tom, no one was there to drax up them Terry's when they got froggy. And right after Tom's death, 
Hold on, what is that? Too, dying from the bug's poison and bumping our kill count oh. up to a dozen. David lights the hungry, hungry. I guess I'd be fire, venom. So now there's a flaming beast from hell flying around that David has to chase down with his mob and beat to death. <laughs> I don't know what part of that whole situation looked like fun, but this dude Joe was in on it, lighting his mob just like David did, but then spilling the bucket of fuel and lighting himself on fire. Why is uh, our bucket of fuel? It, Joe. Be less clumsy. Mrs. Carmody gets a visit from one of the insect creatures as well, but stands perfectly still while praying, and so the bug flies off, further cementing her sense of self righteousness. Oh, it's not until no. I was finally able to hunt down the first Terry and shoot it to death that the people in the store have a chance to breathe. As the rational people put the store back in working order, one of the not so rational patrons tells David that Mrs. Carmody was right about people being killed in the night. This lady is turning to something extreme out of hopelessness, which Patty also it, it, does, but in a different way. When Amanda finds her dead uh, by suicide later that night, an empty that's bottle not good. next to her. David that's, and some of the others start putting together a plan. They'll hit up the pharmacy next door to get pain pills for Joe, who's so badly burnt from the dactyl oh. attack that he's sincerely asking for the gun so he can kill himself and end the pain. And then they'll get the hell out of there entirely. David has a Land Cruiser that fits eight, parked closer to the store than Norton's people and, got, and the plan is to get there and head are, south. Yeah, aren't the, the super religious people going to do something? Can start like, worrying like, about who she's going to sacrifice to make it all better. After a scene filled with some admittedly clunky dialogue, with everyone nakedly stating a bunch of philosophical viewpoints about the nature of humankind and such, David's fears are validated when Carmody gets everyone riled up against their plan to leave, saying it'll attract more of God's wrath or whatever. Uh -huh. Irene shuts her up with a can of peas. Shut up, you miserable buzzard! And then joins David's <laughs> foraging group, which includes Jim the asshole mechanic, Bob, the brother of burn victim Joe, Jessica oh. the arrowhead soldier, Dan, Ollie, and this dude Mike. They walk through heavy mist to the pharmacy Do for they... another great extended sequence. Oh, Irene yeah, helps David I, and yeah. Ollie find the painkillers they need as the others discover they're not alone. In fact, they find another four people in the store just hanging around. I've shown mm -hmm. three here, I'll show the fourth in a minute when the movie gets to it. A fifth body grabs Jim from behind and it turns out to be the MP officer from earlier. He asks for help He's making a whole bunch of noise. pain and guilt. It's all, oh, it's all awful. Then up from his skin comes a bubbling spew. Spiders, that is. Black oh, no. Rich and bugs. He falls no. to the ground and dies with his back burst open to a whole ah, house of baby nasty. So Mama spiders squash spiders. Up, including in the That's a big spider. With anonymous body, and the webs they shoot at the group appear to be acidic. One of the webs wraps around Pardon? Mike's leg and messes him up real good. And oh. as the gang starts to retreat, another hits Mike in the face. He drops to the ground and is quickly swarmed and eaten by baby and mama spiders alone. Oh. It's a good family dinner. Through the power of Ollie's I don't have a problem with spiders, but my god. And proficiency with piercing weapons, they're able to escape the massacre, but not before Bobby succumbs to his leg wound and bleeds out to death. Left behind by Jessup and David on the floor of the pharmacy for spider chow. They get back and the tale of that their adventure causes be more panic spiders. in the rest of the store. Sometime later, David wakes up from passing out to the news that Joe has passed away during the night via infection from his burn wounds. So we'll add him to the kill count that... and just take a minute to reflect on how much that pharmacy trip was all in vain. Seems like all we <laughs> yeah. really did was inspire another passionate sermon from Carmody, who's now converted a whole bunch of people to her cause. Including There's Jim, so the many people man. in this grocery <laughs> store. That's good enough reason for David and his crew to decide that now's the time to make some moves in GTFO. Before they leave, David wants I guess to get that some intel from the soldiers people since that MP officer was saying this whole thing was their fault. Jessup claims ignorance, and so they go to look for the other two, finding them in the back room where they've hung themselves. Apparently, the Arrowhead Project was responsible for this whole thing. Something about portals to other dimensions and the storm messing up their power. Half -life? It's not fully articulated, but that's what we're working with here. As Jessup that, that, that's big half life vibes. by Jim, who takes him out and throws him to the ground in front of the rest of the survivors, blaming him for bringing down the wrath of God. Carmody takes this thread and runs with it, spitting a whole yarn about how uh, pissed off God is at us for messing with Mother Nature. In the ensuing frenzy, Jessup gets beaten a whole bunch and eventually throw him outside. by the butcher, Mr. Oh. Mackie. I just wanted a little expiation, okay? Mackie and the other rabid devotees oh, crowd surf Jessup he straight out the front door and throw him to the wild, where he comes face to face with an accolade looking beast who snatches him up and pulls him back into the mist to eat. At least they'll always know how big Jessup's hand was. The next morning at dawn, David's group gets together and tries to make an exit, but Carmody stops them. Uh, yeah, we uh, need a clean up on aisle one. There's a crazy religious fanatic with a knife. I <laughs> am his vessel. In fact, oh, what a you think? Oh, yeah? The group and start to move in as Carmody orders them to grab Billy and Amanda for human sacrifice. Her yelling is cut short with a gunshot to the abdomen by Ollie, who follows up with a headshot. Nice. Put her down. That's a lot and of bullets. One hell of a performance by Marsha Gay Harden as one of the most easy to hate characters I've seen in a very long time. Very Ollie's sharp good. shooting yeah. is enough to stop the rest of the crazies, and David's group finally makes the big getaway. They get a little turned around in the parking lot, and Myron, the other mechanic, is killed when a spider tackles the... him to the ground and devours. How thick Myron's is that fog, though? 26 victims officially passing Jason X for the most victims in a kill count. Oh, so far. yeah. A so, this is a record. Making it to the Land Cruiser first and opening all the doors Those for Land Cruiser are worth it. Then comes back and grabs him with his big old lobster. Oh, no. Well, he leaves the gun behind him. crab tears Ollie to pieces. A sad but Why are you watching? End to a Why are you no watching? Get in the car. So badassery inside. Oh, the well, there's the gun. Leaves, allowing David and his crew to get inside his car. He haunts for the others, but to no avail, since Bud stumbles back to the entrance of the store and they don't let him in. Cornered and eaten by a bunch of those big spiders. With the acid? These monsters are pretty horrible, but I don't know. 
know if it gets worse than giant acid web spitting spiders, y'all. Before heading that out, they have grab hundreds the of drop, babies. Narrowly avoiding another giant spider that cracks their windshield and crawls away over the roof of his car. Why did they keep trying? Finally, leave the store behind and begin a somber finale to the movie scored by uh. a phantom choir. They drive past the store for one last slow motion look. Be like, hey, we made it out, guys. Inside. Sorry, bud. So close. First stop on the gang's fun little road trip is David's home, but that place gets zero stars out of five since because it's totally it's overrun webs. with spider webs and also because David's wife Stephanie is dead. And that's just not how you get a good Yelp rating, Mist Monsters. No. You can't go around putting people in spider cocoons like that. No, the group drives you can't. Out, determined to see how far their tank of gas will take them and see if they I'm can get Oregon. out of the mist. Oh, so Though they pass a lot of destruction along the way, we only see a single body, a little girl on a school bus. So we'll add oh, her to the count as well. Pressing onward, they also encounter an I guess in the recount, they would count all the people that from were outside. A super cool image that singularly conveys how foobar the situation has become. And then their gas runs out. Now I'm going to tell you straight up, in the book, this is pretty much where it ends. In fact, Wait, they don't really? even explicitly run out of gas. They just pull into a Howard Johnson's and bunker down there for the night, and it ends. But the That's how it ends? The of this story to tell. As they sit there in silence, they hear distant noises from horrors unseen. An unspoken agreement settles between them, and David mm. checks his ammunition mm. to find mm. only four bullets mm. remaining. There's five of us. I'll figure something out. And you're watching like, oh. okay, but you know, what's really gonna happen, right? Especially when Billy wakes up and looks at his dad with wide eyes. But uh, then... Ah! Uh, ah! Uh. Dude, their ears would be gone. Also, that was real quick. Really? Yeah, really. He did it. The movie went there. David freaking Mercy killed Dan, Irene, oh, oh, that's Amanda, why he and his eight-year-old son, Billy, in an effort to spare them the horrors from the mist. It's a total shock and absolutely devastating. Is David that what it... in vain to shoot himself, but there you are know, no more bullets. You know that. He steps outside of his vehicle and, and starts yelling, ready for his inevitable death. Out of the mist come some noises, and then a tank and soldiers. Tons of uh, them back in a Humvee carrying a group of rescuees, including Melissa McBride and her children. Uh, As David looks around in shock, he sees the military laying waste to the creature around them and the which I don't have no idea how they would have managed to fight that his brain broken by the horrific irony that he and the others were mere moments away from rescue uh -huh. to do the unimaginable so yeah one of the most profoundly sad is that one of the most history. shocking the endings in any movie ever they're totally condoned there are also a few more explicit kills than in the novella how many let's oh. find out and get to the numbers oh oh the mist the, the fog machine <laughs> something in the mist something in the mist <laughs> 34 people die in the mist. By far, the highest count we've had so far in a kill count. Corpse. Of the victims, 21 were male, 9 were female, and 4 were little cocoon corpses that you just can't really tell. Either way, a lot of dude deaths as per usual. Oh, yeah. Run time very, of very typical. Minutes, that comes out to a kill on average every 3.71 minutes. Wow. Which is like, wow. That's a lot. Golden Chainsaw That's a lot, a lot. Kill goes to the military police officer. It's got some great effects when he shows his bubbling chest, and it's awesomely disgusting the way his back breaks open to have And even if you're not afraid of spiders, you would be. Norton and the six red shirts he leads out into the mist, since it's the most off screen of all the off screen. You don't even see and anything, do you? Just, is that just the one that has the rope? The saddest movie yeah, that's the one with the rope. I was lucky enough to not have it spoiled before watching it, so goddamn did that hit hard. Next week, we're getting into the Halloween sphere with, with Trick or Treat. And Trick or listen, Treat. Have I'm not sorry, heard I'm not of that movie. I'm not to cover Michael Myers right now, but when I do, I want to be able to cover all 10 Michael. Halloween movies, and I definitely don't have the time to do that right now. So <laughs> That's week, understandable, James. Days. This has been The Kill Count. This hey guys, thanks a lot for watching my kill count for the mist. I want to thank some. I had no idea the kill count was that high. It's definitely Ripley the record. Trick or treat 2007. I had to shave it for my Pennywise costume. Go to my Instagram to check out pictures. It looks great. Don't leave comments talking about my face, because if you do, I'll know you didn't make it to the end of this video. Don't cut uh, short my watch time, motherfucker. Expiation. <laughs> Oh, I definitely, yeah, like when people talk about or like ask when, uh, how there's comments on a video that are like 20 hours old, but the video is like 30 minutes old, it's because it's get the intro. They ask questions because it's get the intro. It was because they patrons pay $3 a month, at least $3 a month, and get the videos a day early and goes so far in supporting the channel. Just like Kill Count's able to exist because of Patreon support, I'm able to make all these videos, which is like... 18 i think it's right now i'm doing 17 videos a week on top of four live streams so i do it on myself and i read every single one of your comments as well last year i did over 900 videos live streaming four times a week and uh did what right over 50,000 comments absolute insanity but this was the mist i had no idea this from 2007 i thought this movie was like in the 90s for some reason i guess i just hear stephen king and i'm just like it you know pennywise it from how long ago was Pennywise? Pennywise was 1990. Like I said, the 90s. Before my time. I didn't realize I was in when The Mist came out.
I had never heard of it when I was 10 years old, obviously. But the next one's going to be Trick or Treat. There's also Aliens. I haven't seen any of those from 1979. What? Oh, wait, how old is Star Wars? Why did Star Wars come out? I have no idea. I look forward to the next video. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. But until the next one, take care and keep the music.